Hey, it's Doug and Amanda from Hammersmith Farms Equestrian Center in East Dennis, Massachusetts. I'm Doug Wrench, I'm the head trainer. I'm Amanda McBee, I'm the assistant head trainer. So on this beautiful, uh, almost January day, a late yeah. late December day, we've got wonderful temperatures. We had the sun out just a minute ago, it just went in. Yeah. Great day for riding, wind's not too bad, which is always a problem on the Cape here. We always get really windy yes, it weather. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, really nice day to ride. I hope all you guys are out there riding your horses and taking advantage of the good weather. Yes. But, um, Subject today, uh, one of my favorites, pressure and release. Yes. All right, and we can't talk about this too much because everything a horse does is based on pressure and release. Mm -hmm. Now I'm riding um, Jagger here, this is Amanda's horse, and that's Rodeo the Mustang here, he's in for training, and our rock star Melly is in the back here. I think Rodeo has a crush on her. Yes. So <laughs> uh, she's kind of hanging out with us too. Um, but. Jagger is a horse that came here. He had kind of two issues that we kind of learned on our own. He didn't like to be mounted from the mounting block. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he seemed such a high-spirited horse. The first time I was on the beach with him, I said, you want to run? Okay, run. And I let him go, and it's like, okay, oh, no. Jagger, when are we going <laughs> to stop? All right? So he becomes a horse that's really hard sometimes to stop. And, and there's a couple of ways we deal with that. Um, the thing I like to do with him, Beans, is um, he gets up into a canter, I'll immediately collect him. Even if I want him to go fast, I'll immediately collect him, rain pressure, right? Nice, nice, easy rain pressure release, rain pressure release, because he'll get up and want to go into a fast canter right off yes. the bat, okay? So if I catch him, this is, what, this is the way I ride him, Beans may ride him differently. If I catch him right away, I get him collected, eh, he's a little cupcake, he's great. Yep. Um, if I let him get going fast, if he's with my big horse, Finn, the two of them, you know, Off the races. it's Kentucky <laughs> Derby City there, you know? They just race each other. Yeah. And to bring them down sometimes is, is difficult. Yes. Um, the way you've got to do it, the natural reaction everybody has, pull back, pull back, pull back on the reins, okay? You notice from, from him already, we've got a fairly, you know, severe bit in his mouth with a curb chain. We've got a pelum, straight pelum in there. And I would like to have him on a, on a more mild bit. Uh, I've tried snaffles, uh, egg butt snaffles. I've tried bitless on him and I don't think it's going to work for him. You know, he goes good on this, yep. but even with this in his mouth, stri straight direct pressure, he's biting down on that bit and yep. he is going. Yep. All right. So what you've got to do where well, your first reaction is to pull until the horse stops, you're hanging on for dear life. Well, you, you got to be able to pressure and release, pressure, release pressure release pressure release okay finn my big quarter horse the big the big gray okay if i do that with him and he really takes off and i you know and i need, i gotta stop him and i just start pulling on him and sitting tall and, and digging myself in put my heels down really what he's gonna do to me he's gonna get to the point where no i'm not stopping yeah. and guess what I'm a 17 two quarter horse and I'm gonna give you the biggest buck of your life and you probably can't stay on. Yes. <laughs> so, so so what I've gotta do is I've gotta to give to the pressure on Finn, come back, give, yep. come back, give, come back, talk to him, purr to him, hum to him, okay? Yep. We talked about things you to make his horses speed up. Everybody knows clucking. He go, he canters on kisses. Yep. That's the way he was trained. A lot of horses have that not been trolled on a down cadence, which is I hum, you know, or, or purr. Okay, to slow the horse down. Now, they don't, they don't know it automatically. Most horses don't know it. You've got to train your horse to do it. But as I'm pulling, it's pressure release, pressure release, pressure release. I'm also humming or, or, or purring to him to get him to slow down. And it generally, again, like trailer loaning, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a process. process. It's not an event. We're not doing an instant stop like a rainer. Yeah. Okay? The other thing is pressure and release. You watch. The two, I think in English, the, the most disciplined form of riding is dressage. Yeah. And in Western, my opinion, it's uh, raining. Okay? The problem with both of those sports are, well, it's not a problem. When, when you do dressage, the whole concept, in my opinion, maybe some people don't agree with this, I want to see you ride that horse. And not be able to tell what you're doing. Right. I, I don't want to be able to see how you're doing it. Yep. Yeah. Everything's subtle. Raining, on the other hand, you see a reining horse spin, okay? You're so, if you haven't seen that before, anyway, you look at it and say, holy, that is awesome, yeah. that horse is doing that. But you didn't really see what the rider's doing. And that, to get a horse to move in a spin like that, yeah. it's gotta be pressure and release. 
okay? If I just, normally when you're, when you're a reining horse, you're getting them to spin, you're over here. You, and if you're not, if the horse isn't reacting that, you're giving some leg too, okay? However, if I do just back, back like this, what's gonna happen is he's gonna move his back end out. And that's not what I want. So I've gotta get a horse to move out. Oh, Jagger, sorry. I've gotta get a horse to actually have a feeling of forward motion even though I'm gonna spin and plant on the back foot, okay? So if I'm spinning this way, it's the, it's the left inside foot stays planted and a horse spins. And the way I do it, pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure. And you don't see those, you'll, you'll just see most of them started, like you told me one time. You'll just see this and you'll think, okay, the horse is, is just spinning, but it's like pressure, release, pressure, release, pressure, release. Now this isn't a video on how to rein or how to spin no, a reining no, horse, but that's just a good a good example of. It's the same concept too with dressage when you're having a horse spin on the forehand or do a spin on the haunches or a turn on the haunches, I should say. Um, it's the same concept of you really want that forward movement because if you don't have that forward movement and you don't have the pressure and release, the horse is either, you know, if you're trying to do a turn on the forehand, the horse is going to move its haunches out. If you're trying to do a turn on the haunches, it's going to move its forehand out trying to get relief from that pressure because the horse is trying to just understand what you want from them and if you're not giving exactly clear communication to what you want, they're not going to understand. So that's why pressure and release is so important because there are times where you do want to put more pressure on to get an instant response and you don't want to confuse your horse. And most English riders get a taste of pressure release, uh, which is commonly called a half halt. Yes. Um, I, I don't, you know, half halts are kind of contact, like squeezing water out of a sponge. Um, to me, I don't. I have a hard time with that being pressure and release. Although it is, it is. I don't. I don't think by teaching it that way, you the don't really pressure like the and release. Of it. Exactly, and and that's that's the other thing we we have to remember is a lot of things we do here may work for us, and then you do exactly the same thing until you practice enough and you've got your timing down with you yeah. and your horse it might not work. Yeah, okay. and pressure release, I mean, that's a concept that we talked about in our trailer loading video and a few other videos when you're doing groundwork or, you know, when you're in the round pen or you're lunging your horse, the concept of pressure and release comes up there too. So it's really, you know, a good place to learn the concept of pressure release and really get the feel for it before you're under saddle is to really do a lot of groundwork with the horse that you're working with and be able to read their body language and tell, okay, when you're putting pressure on the lead rope and the horse starts to pick its head up or it starts to tense up, that's really when you want to release that pressure because you're going to start a battle. And you're like Doug says, you're not going to win a battle trying to outmuscle a horse that's, you know, a thousand plus pounds. It's just and, not going to work. And the thing you mentioned about reading the horse, I mean, I, I read the horse's head, okay? I can tell from my, my collection of information, I get everything I need from his head. Where his ears are, you know, ears back like this so that's you know that's not pin back ears that doing that that doesn't bother me he's probably listening to us oh, yeah. okay so I'll read all that his position of his head as we start to um, off in the sitting trot uh, I watch where the head goes is the head staying high is the head coming down where what is it doing okay that tells me so much and you really we talked about horses and how they can read body language well, they're 50 times better than us at it because their life depends on it. Mm -hmm. Our life doesn't depend on only well, yeah. riding a horse in my <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but horses' life depends on reading body language. Yeah, okay? and a lot of the time uh, with beginners, you see pressure and release come up and the beginners just trying to get the horse to just come to a stop. And they're pull, 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 pull until the horse comes to a stop. Well, a lot of the time it's going to take longer to get the horse to stop if you're not releasing that pressure because it's counterintuitive to release pressure before the horse comes to a stop. But we have to remember, horses aren't machines. A lot of the time, unless you train them that way, you can't just press a button and have something ha happen automatically, especially when you're a beginner rider. So as an instructor, you really want to make sure that you're teaching your beginner riders, you know, Horses build momentum, they're big animals. Sometimes it takes them a step or two to be able to stop or be able to slow down. So that's when pressure and release really comes into play there and teaching it in the beginning. So riders have that concept under their belt so they're really safe once they start progressing. And timing, you know, yeah. how do you how you apply the aids to, and when do you do it? And 
it, that's so important. That only comes from experience. Yeah. You know, riders get a little, well, I talked about my favorite group, the Hunter Jumpers, and I'm true, true stance, I'm not, you know. But I'm just saying, you guys sometimes uh, skip over some things that are hard to learn, like sitting trot, sitting in the seat cantering, in favor of posting trot, trotting in two, or, uh, trot, or cantering in two point, jumping in two point, because you want to jump, I get that. But once you've got to that point where you're now a little serious about being a hunter jumper, go back and work on that skill and the timing of the sitting trot. It, it is going to save your butt when you get in a tough situation. And that's like a lot of the time people during the winter, especially when the ground starts to get harder and things like that, and you're not, you know, really preparing for show season, people think, you know, they just either take the winter off from their riding or they take, you know, they only ride once a week compared to three times a week during the show season. But you really want to take the time this time of year to really practice the more boring things yeah. and get the hang of the time timing of pressure and release and stuff like that because that's really what's going to help you in the show ring especially when you find yourself in a situation where you know your horse is getting really jazzed up going up to a jump or something like that and they're going to be too flat to make it over the jump you know you really need to learn the timing of pressure and release in situations like that to be a successful rider yeah absolutely so um Anything else, it means? No, that's it. I think we, we kind of, we definitely didn't cover the subject. Man, scratching the surface here. So we'll revisit pressure and release the, as long as we're doing these videos because yes. it's probably the most important concept. Mm -hmm. And you don't hear it that much. I don't run into a lot of people that talk about it. Yeah, the real knowledgeable pe horse people, yeah, they do, or they just get it. Yeah. But a lot of people, you don't hear, um, you know, person that owns a horse and rides once a week and ever talking about pressure and release and it would help them so much to understand the concept yes, so does. i hope this helps yeah and uh again like us share us uh comment to the comment page on anything yeah. you're not sure of and if you want to see any other subjects uh just send us a, a note or a pm whatever you want and we'll be glad to cover the subject so thanks for watching yeah thank you and we'll see you guys next week